This video will review the A to J mnemonic for forceps assisted delivery. It is provided as an educational resource. Please follow your institutional, licensing organization and national guidelines. Incorrect forceps application can lead to significant harm to both the mother and the baby. Forceps application must be performed by or under direct supervision of an experienced clinician. Before we start, I would like to mention three actions you never do. One, never apply forceps to an unengaged head. If the head is floating, don't use forceps. Second, never apply forceps unless the position of the head is certain. This can lead to very bad fetal injuries. For example, I'll show you quickly here. Example where you to apply in this position here. Whoops, there we go. We would apply in this position here. As you can see, you've got the blade uh, directly over the orbit and the eye, which could lead to significant injury, plus these abnormal forces uh, could also lead to a skull fracture. Third, never apply forceps unless the cervix is fully dilated. Uh, applying the forceps to a less than fully dilated cervix can lead to a cervical lacerations. These can bleed heavy. They may be very difficult to visualize if they're high in the vagina and can be difficult to repair. So moving along to the mnemonic, A, four components to the A. First, address the patient, explain what you're going to do and get informed consent. Second, make sure analgesia is adequate. This can be either local or regional, for example, an epidural. Three, ask for help. You want more nurses to help with the delivery and with the baby a pediatrician for the baby, surgery and anesthesia should the forceps fail. Fourth, you want there to be an absence of contraindications and its flip side, the presence of an indication. If you place the forceps on without a clear and documented indication, have damage result from the forceps use, you could be held responsible for that damage as you expose the mother and the baby to the risk without a good reason. B, two elements to the B. First, bladder empty. Uh, a full bladder can actually lead, act as a mechanical impediment to descent of the baby and also the bladder itself can get damaged and in and out fully can take care of that problem. Second element to the, to the B is a backup plan. What are you going to do if the forceps fail? C. Two components to the C. First, you want to make sure your cervix is fully dilated, your membranes are ruptured, and your head is engaged. Second element of the C is contractions adequate. If your contractions aren't adequate, consider oxytocin. D, two elements to the D again. First, determine position. You can do this by ultrasound, so place a transducer just above the symphysis pubis and look for the direction of the orbits. Second and more commonly, you can do it by palpation. So you want to feel for the triangular shaped posterior fontanelle and then follow along the sagittal suture when you find it and find your diamond shaped anterior fontanelle and the relative position of those can tell you the position of the head. Second element of the D is think dystocia. Any assisted vaginal delivery is at risk of having a shoulder dystocia develop. E. E stands for equipment check. Make sure you've got the proper forceps you're going to need and any equipment to resuscitate the baby. F. F stands for forceps. More than 600 different types of obstetric forceps have been developed over the last 400 years. Their shape is determined by what you want them to do. Obstetric forceps can assist the delivery by doing one or more of four actions on the baby. First, traction, so you can bring the baby's head down through the pelvis. Second, rotation. If you have the baby's head in a suboptimal rotation, you can use forceps to get it back into OA. They can be also used to flex or extend the head of the baby to ensure that the optimal um, fetal skull diameters are presenting through the pelvis. So looking at a pair of forceps, your parts, these are your handles, you've got your lock, you've got your shanks, and these are your blades, this is the toe of the blade. There are two curvatures to a pair of forceps. First is the cephalic curvature corresponding to the baby's head. So this one you'll notice is elongated, this is for a molded head more round is for the uh, uh, an unmolded head. Then you have your pelvic curvature as such. 
So the pelvic curvature corresponds to the shape of the back wall of the maternal pelvis to allow for, uh, uh, to assist in smooth delivery of the head of the infant as such. Good. Okay. So four types of forceps I'm going to mention. Uh, first of all are Simpsons, and this is a pair of Simpsons. So Simpsons have got an elongated cephalic curve for a molded head. And they also have the pelvic curvature, so they're used for attraction of a molded head, uh, delivering it through the pelvis. Tucker McLean's are similar, except for they have a more rounded cephalic curve. These are Keelan's. Keelan's are used for rotation of the baby's head, so they lack the same pelvic curvature of the other ones. You just rotate the baby's head in place as such. And fourth is uh, Pipers. I don't have a set of Pipers, but they're used for delivery of the aftercoming head uh, in a breech. So prior to putting the forceps onto the baby's head, you want to do a phantom application to make sure they're correctly oriented. So on the outside, just orient them as you think they're going, you're going to want them inside the mom and then you want to take the left handle in your left hand where the blade is going to go onto the left side of the maternal pelvis okay get your assistant to hold it for you and then you want to take the right blade in the right hand it's going to go onto the right side of the maternal pelvis and see if they articulate correctly thank you and as you can see, they have articulated correctly here. I would actually recommend that students do this the wrong way a few times just to get a sense of how tangled up you can get if you're doing this incorrectly. Okay, so now let's do it on the model. So, again, left blade in my left hand is going to go onto the left side of the maternal pelvis. Now there's two ways to insert it. The first way, and I'll just mention this briefly, is to bring it in along the direction or, or parallel to the direction of the angle of the ligament. I won't mention that further. I'm going to describe here the vertical insertion. So you want to hold the blade with two fingers as such, or pardon me, hold the handle with two fingers as such, and then you place two fingers from the other hand deep into the posterior lateral aspect of the vagina and these fingers are going to both guide the blade in plus protect the maternal tissues so once you've got it on you just use gravity to bring the blade around if you're having to push on the handle of the blade you may be misapplying it and once you've got it feel you've got it in the correct position you can get your assistant to hold it for you now you want to take the right blade in your right hand and you're going to want to do the vertical insertion, place your fingers deep in the posterolateral aspect of the vagina and you bring it down, sweep it around, thank you. Once you believe you've got it in the right place, you can then see if the blades articulate and they have. So how do I check that I've got the application correct here? Three things to look for. The triangular shaped posterior fontanelle should be one centimeter or about one finger breadth above the plane of the shanks and midway between them. Secondly, the fenestration should be just barely palpable and admit no more than a fingertip. If you can admit more than a fingertip or they're not symmetric, you've got them misapplied. Third, the lambdoid sutures here should be above and equidistant from the blades with the sagittal suture midway between the blades. Moving on to G. G stands for gentle traction. You only want to exert uh, traction during a con maternal contraction when she's actually pushing. The direction of traction will always be in the axis of the pelvic curve at the point of the pelvis where the head of the baby is and therefore traction will sweep in a J shape. It's going to go in a J shape like this because okay, that's mirrors the maternal pelvis. Now Patchot's maneuver consists of having one hand pulling on the forceps blade in the direction they're extended as such while the other hand pushes down on the shanks at 90 degrees uh, pushes down on the shanks at 90 degrees to the shanks so straight down like this okay and H, H stands for hands are elevated so this is following the pelvic curvature so mother starts to get a contraction 
Push, 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 push. Take a deep breath. Push, 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 push. Take a deep breath. Notice how I'm gradually moving the handles in the J shape. Your contraction is gone. You wait. Now, if it happens that the head goes a little bit up in between contractions, that's fine. Just follow it up with the forceps. Wait until she's getting another contraction. Push, 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 push. I, I stands for incision, that's a episiotomy. So if you if you need more room for the blades at some point, you may want to consider an appease. Push, 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 push. Contraction's gone. You wait. Contraction's coming back. Push, 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 push. J stands for jaw, so you want to remove the forceps when the jaw is visible. So right now. You know, I've got the jaw here, so you want to remove the blades in the reverse order of how they were applied, so the right one comes off first, the left one comes off second, and now you just proceed to deliver the baby as you would. So just before we end, I'd like to quickly show what the uh, blades look like if they're properly applied to the baby's head. So, that's what it will look like, and as you can see, the uh, toe is not crushing the baby's jaw. The blade is, in, is, is just anterior to the ear and partially overlapping it, okay. and the cephalic curvature of the blade ends with the parietal bones, ends at the parietal bones, right, with the shanks right over the flexion point. And I discussed the flexion point a bit more in the vacuum assisted delivery. Please also note that the way they're positioned, the widest point of the baby's head is also the widest point of the in between the two blades. Alright, thank you.